The United States just closed down two nuclear power plants within the last few months. The same thing has happened in a number of countries around the world. So the question is, have we hit peak nuclear? Is this even a good thing if we have? Well, the truth is we may have actually passed peak nuclear several years ago. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Bangkok in Thailand today. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. During 2022, the International Atomic Energy Agency, called the IAEA, that's quite a mouthful to say, unexpectedly withdrew 17 nuclear power reactors from its statistics of operating reactors. This created a new status category called suspended operation and retroactively modified its data series accordingly. As of the 1st of January 2023, WNISR considers 411 reactors in operation, whereas the IAEA website counts 422 a difference of 11 reactors. The smallest difference between the two data sets in more than a decade. In other words, they basically agree. According to the updated data, the IAEA operating reactor number peaked in 2005 at 440 reactors, while the WNSR data showed a peak in 2002 at 438 reactors. Very, very close numbers, three years apart. As three remaining reactors in Germany with four gigawatt installed capacity have not been closed by the end of 2022. According to the WNISR data series, world operating nuclear capacity exceeded the previous 2006 record by two gigawatts to reach 369.3 gigawatts. The revised IAEA data shows an operating capacity of 378.3 gigawatts with the historic maximum reached in 2018 at 381. What does that mean? Well, seven new reactors started operating in 2022 worldwide, of which three in China and one each in Pakistan, built by Chinese companies, Finland, South Korea, and the United Arab Emirates, or the UAE. This outcome compares with 15 expected grid connections at the beginning of the year, as the startup of eight units was delayed until at least into 2023. Of those 15, while well, several have already been canceled, one reactor, Hanbit 4 in South Korea, restarted after a five year long term outage for maintenance. Five years is a long time for maintenance. While four units, two each in Canada and India, entered the category and were withdrawn from operating status. Five reactors were closed, of which three in the United Kingdom and one each in Belgium and the United States. And this brings the total number of closed reactors around the world to 207. Following a last minute change of the German nuclear law, the operation of the three remaining reactors in the country previously scheduled to close by year end has been stretched to the end of April, meaning only four weeks from now at the absolute latest. That means the three remaining nuclear reactors in Germany will be closed within four weeks. The operators are not allowed to refuel the reactors, so their power generation will progressively decline until they are permanently closed. Construction has started though on 10 reactors, including five in China, two in Egypt, and one in Turkey. So nuclear power appears to be dying in the West and increasing a bit outside of the West. All the projects underway outside China are of Russian design. In addition, the Russian industry designed four of the projects in China. On the other hand, construction of two barges planned to be equipped with Russian reactors in Russia has been launched in China. In addition, construction has officially restarted at Angra 3 in Brazil following a seven year long suspension triggered by a massive corruption scandal. There are 30 nuclear power reactors under construction in 17 countries as of the 1st of January 2023. While China is hosting by far the largest number of construction projects with 22 reactors, the Russian nuclear industry is by far the largest builder in the world, with 25 reactors in work in nine countries, including Russia and Slovakia, where two Russian designed reactors are being completed by a Czech-led consortium. As you can see, 
even though Russia is at war with Ukraine, or I mean, has declared war on Ukraine by its own choice, the world still doesn't seem to uh, mind building Russian reactors. Four in five reactors under construction in the world are either being built by Chinese or Russian nuclear industries. The only two other countries building abroad are France in the UK and South Korea in the UAE, while Argentina, India and the US are implementing nuclear projects only domestically. Only three of 17 countries implement nuclear power projects at multiple sites. The other 14 have work limited to a single site. Until September 2022, the IAEA's online power reactor information system database counted 33 reactors as operational operating in Japan, whereas 20 of these had not produced power since 2010-2012. An additional three units had been shut down ever since the Niigata earthquake in 2007. Ten years ago, on the 16th of January 2013, the IAEA moved 47 reactors in Japan, most of them shut down in the aftermath of the Fukushima events in 2011 from the category in operation into long-term shutdown. That e those existed in the IAEA statistical system until October 2022. Only two days later, the move was labeled a clerical error and the action was reversed at the request of the Japanese government. Basically, it took Japan a long time after the tsunami disaster to actually let the world know uh, and let the Japanese people know, yes, um, in fact, we have restarted most of our nuclear reactors. Since 2014, the WNISR has been calling for an appropriate reflection in world nuclear statistics of the unique situation in Japan, stressing that the approach taken by the IAEA, the Japanese government, utilities, industry, and many research bodies, as well as other governments and organizations, to continue classifying the entire stranded reactor fleet in the country as inoperational operational is actually misleading and lying. This situation led the WNISR to introduce the long-term outage category with a simple empirical definition. A nuclear reactor is considered in long-term outage or LTO if it has not generated any electricity in the previous calendar year and in the first half of the current calendar year it is withdrawn from operational status retroactively from the day it has been disconnected from the grid. All reactors matching those criteria were then placed in LTO in the WNISR statistics. So it appears the WNISR is really telling the truth here. They're trying to be as objective as possible. And it believes that the Japanese government is not really telling the truth about what's happening with its nuclear reactors. In September 2022, 12 Japanese reactors were gradually retrieved from the list of operating operational reactors and their status changed to long-term shutdown. That's 12 reactors. Eventually, by mid-October 2022, this category was changed to suspended operation. And in November 2022, 2022, four more Japanese reactors joined this newly created category, as well as one Indian reactor that had not generated any power since 2004, 19 years ago. Thus, as of the 10th of January 2023, there are a total of 17 reactors in the category suspended operation, and 28 units in LTO. Now, all those changes happened in Japan and worldwide without any public announcement or explanation. The IAEA has argued in the past that they only serve as the database manager. They can only provide suggestions, but ultimately all changes are being decided by member state officials and implemented in the PRIS database by the respective government appointed data providers. Now, apparently there's been many conversations between the Japanese government and the officials around the world on what's really going on with these nuclear reactors. And the truth is, it appears as though most of them have actually really been shut down. As of the end of 2022, an additional seven reactors have not provided any power since 2010. And it appears as though there's actually been a quite a number of political decisions made in Japan to close reactors because of the aftermath of the tsunami and its devastating effects. As of July 2022, the evolution of the world nuclear fleet showed a peak of officially operating reactors in 2018. 
both in terms of number and capacity, with 449 reactors and a maximum capacity of 396 gigawatts. It, those numbers have declined ever since. The data for the end of 2021 showed 437 reactors in operation with a capacity of 389 gigawatts, meaning total capacity decreased. Although the data has been modified as of November 2022, this information is still displayed on the IAEA's website. By the end of 2022, global peak nuclear power capacity declined from 390 gigawatts to 380 gigawatts, 15.3 gigawatts less than the 396 gigawatts previously indicated. This means we actually hit peak nuclear five years ago in 2018. And as a result of this, nuclear power worldwide will actually never ever surpass those 2018 levels. Why is that? Well, there's not enough reactors being built worldwide to replace those that are actually going into, well, the funeral of nuclear reactors. Now, one of the big problems with nuclear, nuclear reactors is that whilst they don't take up that much land, no one wants to live near them. So actually, solar panels are more efficient than a nuclear reactor power plant. Elon Musk actually explained the mathematics behind this in an interview on YouTube. And he talked about how the amount of solar you can put in the same area will give you more power than a nuclear reactor. Plus, the permitting, it's very easy. In addition to that, many, many new solar farms are simply being built out on existing farmland. What the farmers are doing is simply using the solar farms as shade for their sheep. And it works really well. The grass grows better underneath the panels, the sheep get shade, and we don't take up any land for new power plants. It's incredibly efficient. Plus, if you combine this with the fact that the cost of wind and solar generation is coming down significantly with panel prices coming down this year by 25% and the cost to manufacture solar panels coming down by 50%, it means the end is here for nuclear. Now, many of you have emailed me saying, you're wrong, nuclear is the future of the world. Well, statistically, actually, it's not. Solar, wind, and batteries are gaining pace at a record rate, year after year after year. My friends, if you're in on the nuclear boat, well, that ship has most certainly sailed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.